she's a uh, kindergarten teacher with Sari High School. Uh, Schools. Uh, she's here tonight to talk a little bit about Invest for Ed. As you all know, the Supreme Court has taken that off the ballot this year. But they are still motivated. She is a uh, liaison, liaison for Red for Ed and Invest for Ed. And she's here to talk a little bit about what they're going to do now and for what you see on the table as well, Proposition 305. So please give a warm welcome to Barb Taylor. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me today, Terry. Um, it's an honor to speak anytime on behalf of the children of the state of Arizona. And that's what I'm here to do today, to speak for children. And guess what, when I speak in front of Republicans, I say the same thing. <laughs> and I get just as many nods and smiles. Everybody agrees that children and their education is important. What is different is our thoughts about how to make that happen, to provide a quality education for every child in the state of Arizona. So I, a little bit about me. Again, my name is Barb Tingle. I teach kindergarten at Sarita Primary School across the street from Fry's. My mom taught kindergarten at Sarita Primary School as well. My roots go very deep in this community. I am a product of Arizona Public Schools, kindergarten through 12th grade. I went to the U of A, I went to NAU, got degrees from both of those places. I currently work um, in conjunction with the Department of Education in Arizona as well as the Arizona Educational Association which is the nonprofit part of the Department of Education in Arizona. My heart is in education for Arizona, but really my heart is for kindergarten students. I will work so hard for them to make sure that they have the opportunity to do whatever it is they want to do. When I was asked to speak today, it was originally about Proposition 207, which we all know got knocked off the ballot. Boo! Um, you can see the shirt I'm wearing, which hopefully you are familiar with, that Arizona Education um, United, Arizona Educators United, the AEU, which I can tell you is a grassroots organization with no budget and no officers. And it's just a, teachers around the state of Arizona saying, there is a big problem that we need to solve. It got going really strong um, last winter when we decided, hey, our lawmakers are not fixing the problem and they're not even listening to us. We need to get together and do something. We saw what West Virginia was doing and said, we can do that. So we modeled our efforts after West Virginia almost uh, completely. Then we started getting messages from West Virginia saying, hey, Tell us what you're doing, because you're doing great stuff that we want to copy. <laughs> Within about a month, schools throughout the state had liaisons. I'm one of the liaisons. I'm the liaison for my school. My job is to get everyone at my school on board, educated about what we can do to make a change, what they can do. We're in the trenches, we're doing little bits and pieces, but guess what, enough, you get enough ants working, they can move a mountain. That is what we're attempting to do. As you probably saw in the news, Red for Ed became a big thing in the spring. We all went to the Capitol. I actually stayed here. I was one of the teachers in charge of feeding the 2,000 kids in our area who didn't get free and reduced lunches the days that we were out. Uh, we took personal days and sick days to do that. We did not just skip out of school. No one just took free days off. And we made lunches and delivered lunches to the homes of those 2,000 kids and breakfasts. We did not want our kids to go home. And I'd like to applaud you because donations came in from this community to get that done. So thank you, thank you very much for supporting our efforts and our children. So things got going, we were at the Capitol, we felt like we were making an impact. We found out how hard some uh, government officials can push back because they have a lot of support behind them and they have money behind them and they have a 
have the power behind them. And we just kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and we did a lot of overnights at the Capitol, and we found out how corrupt government can be at times. And we were very disappointed in some people that we found. Well, guess what? Our efforts paid off, yes. slightly. The governor came up with a plan, 20, 20 by 2020. Teachers will all get a 20% raise by 2020, a 10% raise this year. I can tell you right now that Sarita Unified School District did give a 10% raise to teachers. Now counselors, now psychologists, many people, oh, not music teachers, because they don't have their own little class. They see everybody. Not everybody got that raise, but the district was able to give us a 10% raise by taking from a budget, from our budget, another spot and adding it to what the governor gave. He didn't give 10% for everybody. It doesn't happen like he says. So that was a little disappointing, but our district is trying very hard. We know that's not enough. We know the government, the, the governor can promise things, and he did give us some last year, but will he give it next year? We don't know. And we don't know how he'll give it. And that concerns us greatly how this will happen. Because of that, we got on board and decided, now when I say we, I'm talking about teachers across the state, and we do have five teachers in Phoenix that are our unofficial leaders. Those five teachers put out an idea saying, why don't we get a proposition going and let the voters decide? And then have something that the governor can't just turn off like a light switch and change at his whim. That became Proposition 207. Thousands and thousands of teachers and other supporters spent their summer gathering signatures. Um, there's a couple people in here that I spoke with as they went into the Green Valley Library as I sat outside the library gathering signatures and gathering, taking them to Tucson and getting them all notarized and doing the whole thing. And guess what? We did it. We got more than enough to get the proposition on the ballot. We were super excited. And then the government stepped in. Lobbyists tried multiple times to find problems with that proposition. Multiple times they went to officials, the courts, and said, hey, this, this can't be on the ballot because of this, or this, or this. And they got turned down every time until the fateful one. <laughs> and it was over some common syntax. And they got the judge to say, nope, the Supreme Court of Arizona said, nope, that can't be on. And guess what? The Supreme Court used to have five people. And when Governor Ducey got into office, he added two more. And you can imagine the kind of judges he added. Not that they're poor judges, but just that they're slanted one way or the other. So those seven judges had a majority of, no, nope, can't be on the ballot. Proposition 207 is gone. That was a huge blow. We could not believe that happened. And yet, we have not given up. We're still determined. Changes need to happen. Our next, um, our, our, one of our big pushes now is to, is to support legislators, support government officials that support our children. Um, the governor's plan of trickle down and pulling in big business and hoping that eventually helps our kids. It hasn't worked so far and we don't see it. We don't, when you give people loopholes like that, we just don't see how it's going to work. We have said, here's our plan. Arizona said, nope, not good enough and they're just kind of ignoring us. So uh, we are encouraging people to vote pro-education this year, vote for people who have made it clear that they want to directly help our kids. I will tell you that schools function today, well, in 2008, I don't know how many were here then, but the recession hit Arizona. And funding got pulled from many places in the state government, including education. A lot of funding got pulled from education in 2008. Well, here we are in 2018, and we are still below where we were in 2008. Think about how prices have gone up since then. Think about how salaries have gone up, not quite for teachers, but in general, we are still below 2008 level. When we went to the Capitol, we said, just give us back where we were in 2008, and we will go away and do our jobs, which is what we wanted to do anyway. And our state government said, nope, not going to do it. 
You're going to play by our rules. You're going to use our plan. We said just 2008. That's all we want. That's all we still want. Get us back to 2008. And we'll be happy. We can function. We can teach our kids. We can give them the opportunities. Um, so far, it's fallen on deaf ears. So what we're doing is we are talking to people, just like I'm talking to you today. We're going door to door. We're going to soccer games for five-year-olds. We're going everywhere we can think of and just educating people about what the situation is and what they can do. Hope is not all lost, that's for sure. 2000, or 207 is gone, that prop, but we're not done. We're not done yet. You're going to see a lot of red shirts. Tomorrow is statewide wear a bit in support of education. Um, so feel free to join in with that. You'll see a lot of shirts like this. We spent a lot of nights printing these for free to give to people to say, hey, this is, this is important to us. So go for it. Um, I, I, I would like to finish talking about something uh, that you have on your table there, Proposition 305. I would like you to vote no on that. Proposition 305 talks about um, scholarships for students. What those scholarships do in is it gives parents the opportunity to take their kid out of public school and take that kid's money with them and decide what to do with it. And I'll tell you what overall it does, it waters down our public schools. It's taking away from our public schools. Now if we didn't function primarily with public school, that might be great, but you know what Arizona set up to teach kids with public schools. Um, that, that program is a very good one for some children. Some children do not thrive in a public school situation. Uh, we, I, we have kids who went to our school and then took advantage of that program, kids who are very severely handicapped, and their parents said, hey, this is another program that I think they do well with. That, this, the um, endowment scholarships is great for that. Some people need that. The majority of kids don't. Proposition 305, if it goes through, will greatly expand that program so that just about any parent can say, I want to take my kid, and I want to take my kid's money, and I want to plan their whole education using state money. And yes, there are some guidelines, but it waters down our public education greatly. So my request to you is vote no on Proposition 305 and spread the word if you would. And if you see someone wearing a red shirt, hot and sweaty, standing outside talking to people, or someone comes to your door and says, do you have a minute to listen to a teacher? And I will tell you what it's like in my classroom. And I will tell you what I would like the state government to do to get us up even to minimum standards so that Arizona kids have a shot at keeping up with kids not only in the rest of the country, but in the rest of the world. I would hope that you would open your door more than a crack, maybe offer them a cold drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> and when your friends are talking about this, if you're comfortable with it, let them know that they can have an impact at the polls this year. It would not take very many switches from Pro, from anti-education to pro-education, it would not take that many to really make a significant difference. So, again, I'm Barb Tingle. I teach at Sarita Primary School. I've had the opportunity to have both representatives spend the day in my classroom, and they left smelling like Plato and Goose <laughs> And they have both agreed to come back to the district this year and tour schools and see what's happening so that they can share with their colleagues and say, hey, I was in the trench. I know what's going on. I've seen broken, broken door frames, and I've seen the lack of materials, and I've seen how it happens, and I know what we can do to help. But just like I mentioned, all those little teacher ants working, well, today I am initiating you into our colony with the hopes that you can help us get our message out, and when it's time to vote, you will, you will use your voice and, and make an impact as well. I'll be here later if you have any questions about any details or anything. I'm, I'm a teacher. I have my own classroom. I'm the queen. I can talk all day. <laughs> if you were five, I'd be more comfortable, but not. But I'd love to answer questions that you might have. And thank you for your attention now.